In an earlier episode, we spoke about the affair of the poisons. This was a scandalous event that happened in Paris, France in 1677, ending in 1682. At this point, witchcraft, Satanism, black masses, and yes, of course, poisoning people was rampant across the aristocratic nobility of the French court. But there was one scandal in particular that started it all. But before we go any further, you know what to do. Please hit that subscribe button and give us a like. As always, a very, very, very special thank you to all of our patrons. If you would like to join our Patreon program, there is a link in the description box down below. Welcome to Esoteric Atlanta. My name is Bryce, and today we are going to be talking about the Marquis de Brimville. Now, yes, once again, I am in another location in my house. We as I've said, we've been playing with this new camera and trying to figure out the best angle to give you guys a nice looking background. Some of you suggested a green background and so I did have a green chair, so I thought I would try it out today. Please let me know what you think. I also want to remind you all that we will be doing our second ever live tonight at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time we are going to start to look at different subjects spoken about in the Law of One, which is the raw material. I hope you all will be able to join us. It should be about 90 minutes to two hours is what I'm looking at doing. I know I said earlier that I wanted to do the Mother of Darkness castle in a live episode, and I've done extensive research on the Mother of Darkness castle. You guys have recommended that to me. Unfortunately, the Mother of Darkness Castle, in order to do that story justice, I need to talk about some stuff that YouTube will not allow me to talk about. YouTube has already taken down a few of my videos where I dive into some of these darker subjects. Um, I am, I do, I should say, I do have a BitChute account. I have not put anything up on it yet, but what I am considering doing is taking all the videos that YouTube will not allow and putting them on the BitChute account. And if the BitChute account does well and you guys really like having that outlet too, maybe I can do a Mother of Darkness video to put on the BitChute account and not this YouTube account. But from what I understand, BitChute does not offer the live access button, so it would have to be in a story form. So who was the Marquis de Bramville and why was her life, or more importantly, her death so scandalous? Well, she was born Maria Madeleine de Aubry on the 22nd of June, 1630. She was a French aristocratic woman. Her father had a lot of push and pull in the French government, so therefore he was connected to King Louis XIV's court, and her mother's brother was the man who settled the city of Montreal in Canada. Back then it was called New France, but yes, of course, now it's Canada. Now she allegedly was her father's favorite child. She was the oldest of five kids. But because she was a woman, and because of French law in those days, a female could not necessarily inherit her father's estate. So therefore, she needed to marry. Marry someone within the gentry class, within the same nobility that she was a part of. And when she was 21, she married a man from a very, very wealthy family. His family got its riches from the tapestry industry. This, of course, meant that she came with a dowry, from her father and also collected a lot of money from her husband and her husband's family. 
by her marriage, she became the Marquis de Bramville, and at this point, the Marquis de Bramville was sitting pretty in life. As we know from relationships of Yorn, especially in the aristocratic societies, most of these marriages were arranged. It was all political, especially for the royal family, but also for the nobility. And so with a lot of these marriages, there wasn't much romantic interest or love between the husband or the wife. And we know that in the French court, affairs were very, very common. It wasn't as shocking or as scandalous as they are today, except for the case of Marquis de Bramville. You see, Marquis de Bramville ended up meeting a man by the name of Saint Croix, and she developed a love affair with him. Now, the Marquis de Bramville would end up having seven children all together, three with her husband, who were considered legitimate at that time, and four with her lover, Saint Croix, who would be considered illegitimate. Now, it wasn't really the affair, in my opinion, that made her father upset, but it was the fact that the Marquis de Bramville started to divide up the money between her and her husband. This was seen as like divorce back then, and it was a major, 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 major scandal for this French aristocratic society. Now, the Marquis de Bramville would tell her father and the society people that she was friends with that it was because her husband had issues with gambling. Now, this was true to an extent. From what I could find, he did lose a lot of money through his gambling habits, and so maybe some people bought that, that she was just trying to divide the funds up so they wouldn't end up bankrupt. However, she herself also had a bit of a spending problem. Well, her father was so upset by this whole situation that in 1663, he had Saint Croix, her lover, arrested right in front of her. He had the king sign off on the arrest. There were really no charges against him. I guess they could just do that back then. Well, actually, they probably still do that today. I think there's probably a few people sitting in jail that really didn't do anything wrong. But, you know, people in higher places wanted to get rid of the people, so that's why they're in jail. You guys know what I'm saying. There's always corruption everywhere. But the Marquis de Bramville and her lover, saint Croix were in their carriage going down the streets of Paris, just a normal day, and all of a sudden, they were stopped. The guards removed saint Croix from the carriage and took him and held him prisoner in the Bastille in Paris. The Marquis de Bramville's father hoped that by keeping saint Croix in the prison for two months, the affair would end and all this scandalous embarrassment with the money being spent would cease and people could go on with their lives. While saint Croix was in the Bastille, he ended up meeting somebody named Exile, who was a gentleman in waiting to Queen Christina of Sweden. At this point, Sweden and France were not on the best of terms, and with Exile in the French court, King Louis XIV got really uncomfortable because Exile was known to be a rather talented chemist. And there was already quite a fear of poisoning going through the French court. And so our beloved King Louis XIV, the Sun King, had Exile put in the Bastille for a while as well. Well, apparently, saint Croix and Exile became friends within this situation that they were both probably unfairly put in. And it is at that point that historians believe that Exile taught saint Croix the art of poisoning. After saint Croix was released from the Bastille, he put up a front that he was a changed man. He went and he got married. However, true love never dies, and the Marquis de Bramville 
and Sen Kwa kept up their affair. In the meantime, Sen Kwa decided to open up an alchemy business, a chemistry business, and this allowed him to get certain licenses to be able to handle certain poisons. Yes, even back in those days, you had to have a license to run particular businesses. I found that very interesting. In my mind, sometimes I think about history as kind of being like the Wild West, where you could just do shit without actually having a license to do it. So I was quite shocked when I read about the whole licensing thing with poisons. Well, at this point, the Marquis de Gramville ended up spending a lot of time, as always, as she's done throughout her whole marriage with her boyfriend, Saint Croix. Of course, in his shop, she too started to learn about poisoning. Now, it is suspected that the Marquis de Bramville tested out poisons on sick patients in the local hospital. You see, it was very common for the nobility to be philanthropist and to do charity work, and so for the Marquis de Bramville to pitch up at the hospital across the street from the Notre Dame in Paris to be of service to the sick people was not uncommon. In fact, her life reminds me of a very rich somebody we have in our society today who tends to like to experiment with his poisons on the less fortunate as well. Now, experimenting on sick people in hospitals with poisons really was not noticed until after her death. You know, it was they were dying anyway, and so for her to experiment, it wasn't like they noticed when, like, John Smith down the hall died, because he had been sick as it was. That's why he was in the hospital. So this was the perfect you know, practice ground for this eventual serial killer to get started in her craft. In the year 1666, 666, that, that did not get past me, 1666, she started to slowly poison her father. I guess you could say that she probably had a lot of daddy issues, and she hired a man named Gascon to be her father's footman in his house. And this, this seems very typical of what we do today when our parents start to get elderly and people will hire help sometimes to come into their parents' house to make sure that their parents are able to do things. So that just kind of, it seems like that was her cover. But this Gascon kind of helped her with this poisoning. Now the poisoning she used on her father was a very specific type of recipe that allowed the body to look like it died of natural causes. And in fact, in September of that year, her father did pass away and the original autopsy said that he died of gout. Now, after his death, she did receive some money from his estate in the form of an inheritance because she was a married woman. But she blew through that money pretty quickly. And so she started to go after her brothers next because the boys in the family obviously inherited more than the girls. And it was the same thing in which it worked. Over time, she eventually like killed her brothers too. Her luck changed in 1672 when her lover Saint Croix up and died. Now some people think he might have accidentally poisoned himself in his own experiments, but that's still debatable. The point is that he died. And when he died, Saint Croix was in a bit of a rut. He was in debt, owed a lot of people a lot of money. And he had this box this box of letters where he had corresponded with a lot of people who were using his services of poison. Well, in this box were also letters he had with his girlfriend, his lover, the Marquis de Bramville, where she basically was confessing in these letters to her lover that she was slowly going to be poisoning her father to get money. And she promised Saint Croix that she would send some of this money to him to pay off her debts. At this point, the French court 
the police, the authorities, whatever, they were on to her. They all of a sudden knew that she was responsible for the death of her dad and some other family members. Well, the Marquis de Brem Villet was not a stupid woman. Once she knew that they had discovered the box of correspondence, she up and high tailed it to England, where she hid out for a couple of years. Now, while she was hiding, the authorities were still trying to find her and bring her back to France to face her charges. It was her sister, Maria Teresa, that was constantly sending her money, although it wasn't a lot. It wasn't the lavish lifestyle that she was used to. And it was in 1674 that she was caught in Belgium. She went to go rent a room where somebody recognized her and tipped off the authorities. Now amongst her possessions they also found a letter that made them believe that she also tried to kill her husband and one of her daughters which never worked. But that's pretty sick for a mother to want to kill her child. At first the Marquis de Bramville did try to kill herself in prison as many people often do when they're having to answer for heinous crimes that are definitely not going to go left unpunished. And then she tried to act stupid about the letters and what was in the letters like she didn't know what they were talking about, like somebody had faked those letters. Then she denied everything. But at her trial, another lover named Jean-Baptiste Brancourt actually testified against her. God, how many lovers and boyfriends did this woman have? I mean, I guess because they didn't have, like, TV back then. Maybe that was their entertainment. Like, has Netflix replaced that for us? I don't know. Anyway, girl had a lot of boyfriends. But he said that the Marquis de Bramville had told him about her murdering her family and inheriting money with the help of Sun Qua, her number one boo, her number one boyfriend, and that she said that they had also attempted to kill him as well with poison, which at that case, I don't know why you would continue seeing a woman if she admitted that to you, but I know that there are some guys out there that like crazy women, so maybe that's just a story that is old as time. Well, the Marquis de Bram Villet was found guilty of her crime. So again, she is a noble woman, part of the aristocrat society of the French court. So this became one of the most sensational stories of Paris at this time. Now for her punishment, not only was she going to be executed, but she was going to be tortured and executed. They did what they called the water cure, which sounds like a crazy, some people die from this, this, this water cure where they force the person to drink a lot of water in a situation where their body's not totally able to digest it quickly. And then because France was a, or is still, I don't know if it is still, but was then back then a Catholic country, they provided her with a confess a confessor so that she could confess her sins before going to meet her maker. Now, the account of her life and leading up to her execution were written down by her confessor, who apparently was very new on the job, and so he was a bit of an overachiever and literally wrote everything down. And his notes are at the Jesuit Library of Paris even to this day. Now on the day of her execution, all the aristocrats gathered outside to watch basically her death walk. Now, for people who were going to be executed, they wore basically a white slip over their body for the execution. But they did something with her that I'd never heard before, but found quite interesting. As she was going to her place of execution, they actually made a pit stop by Notre Dame, where she had to do what they called a man honorable. Again, I don't speak French, so Forgive me if that is not how that is said. I am an English speaker. But this aman honorable was a practice where they would tie a noose around the sinner's neck and guide them like a dog through the church where they would have to humbly beg for forgiveness. 
after that, they took her to the place of her execution, which is now called the Hotel de Ville. And this is where a lot of executions took place. It was like their city hall back in those days. You can still visit this place if you're in Paris today. Upon reaching her execution spot, the executioner shaved her hair off of her head and then chopped her head off. At that point, her body was burned and as they say, the ashes flew everywhere. Now there is something very interesting about the Marquet de Burlay's childhood that she said to her confessor before she was executed and that was that she started to um, be A-B-U-S-E, can't say that word on YouTube, but A-B-U-S-E by a family member when she was seven years old. She would not say who that family member was, but many people do believe that it was possibly her father. She also admitted admitted to having a relationship, if you know what I mean, those kind of relationships, with her brother. We saw this a lot with Catherine de Medici. We see this a lot with these aristocratic families that possibly might have been involved in some dark stuff in their private lives. We know that our powerful families in our world today are also still involved in some of these dark things. And so sometimes I wonder with the Marquis de Bramville, was she totally a psychopath or was she pushed to the brink of being a psychopath by the effects of her family. Yes, what she did was awful and it should have never happened. But I do know that a lot of people get pushed into doing stuff like that because the trauma of something happening when they were young. I would love to know all of your thoughts regarding that and let me know if you've heard of this story before. This was the incident that kicked off the affair of the poison. She was executed in 1676 and after her death, man, King Louis XIV was super suspicious of all the nobility. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed that story. Once again, please leave me your opinions in the comment section below. I am looking forward to seeing you all again this evening at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time for a live where we will be talking about some of the raw material. A lot of you guys asked about super chats in the live. The first live we did, I did not have the Super Chats button on, but that button will be available tonight during our live for those who would like to use it. When we get started in the live, I probably will not be able to look at the comments as I'm going through the material, but we will have Todd here moderating as well, and I will have him looking at certain questions. And then once we get to the end of looking through the material, that's when I'll be able to look at your comments to answer any questions that you might have regarding what we're looking through. All right, I hope you have a wonderful Friday, and once again, I look forward to seeing you again this evening. If you would like to purchase our opening song, there is a link in the description box below, and I will also be placing a link to another video we did regarding the affairs of the poisons. If you missed it, just look down in the description box and you can see that video as well. Thank you to Todd Roderick for helping me getting all of this stuff out for you guys today, and I will most definitely see you guys later on. Bye!